All right, so let's get started with our online lecture uh, for this week. So um, we're going to be doing uh, an exercise uh, involving MATLAB, specifically how to create a, uh, a script and how to do some, uh, some basic programming. Now, uh, just a little bit on announcements. Uh, homework 6, uh, which is our first MATLAB assignment, is going to be due Tuesday of next week when you get in class. Uh, the computer lab in the new building should be open if you want to work on your homework assignment. Um, and again, uh, from our last lecture, you know you can download uh, Octave uh, uh, to work on uh, these assignments at home. Uh, but uh, as you know, I'm away uh, for the rest of this week uh, traveling uh, with the civil engineering students uh, for a competition. Uh, I can be reached by email if any of you uh, have any questions. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get started into our, our lecture, uh, our lecture two. And um, really what we want to try and do is start looking at um, the development of some, uh, uh, some scripts. And, and the reason why uh, this is uh, going to be important uh, is because if you recall with what we did last time, uh, we were able to do some pretty fundamental computations with MATLAB. One of the big problems is that we weren't able to really save any of our work. Um, and that's where a script comes into play, where you can actually save uh, uh, your, uh, your computations. Now in order to save our work we'll create what are called uh, MATLAB scripts, which a script is really just a, a fancy term for a program uh, in MATLAB. Um, scripts just tends to be the, uh, uh, the, the terminology that's used. They're also commonly referred to as M files because of their extension. So if I, uh, I name a, uh, uh, a MATLAB file it might be something like Greg's program.m and the dot .m uh, stands for a, uh, a MATLAB script. So you'll sometimes hear them called uh, M files uh, as well. Now to begin a script, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if I have MATLAB open, so here you can see I've got a, a MATLAB uh, interface open down here. I can go and uh, select new script. You can see it here on the, uh, the top left. And as soon as you do that, that'll open up a, uh, a new uh, programming window where you can begin to write a script. This is where you would save, uh, or where you could uh, begin to write a program that you could ultimately uh, save. So um, a couple things uh, about this, uh, this editor. Um, uh, before we get into this, um, uh, it would probably not be the worst idea in the world to um, uh, when you when you're beginning writing computations to save uh, these on your B drive or your flash drive. But on a separate note, you might want to create a separate folder uh, for each script because when we start working on plotting and output and inputting data and things like that, you want all of the associated files with your program to all be in the same folder. Um, so it's probably a good idea to create a a, a new folder. In fact, what I'm going to do on my V drive, uh, here's my, my V drive. I'm actually going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it MATLAB. Um, so I've got V and MATLAB and I'm going to use this to uh, uh, save my, uh, my programs. Okay, so a few uh, starting pointers before we start actually getting into some, some basic programming. So all the rules that we covered in the previous lecture still apply. You know, how to properly name a variable. Um, you know, when you use a semicolon, that'll suppress the output to the command window, uh, et cetera. Um, so, you, you know, you'll want to uh, make sure that you're, you're um, well equipped to, to, to negotiate those rules. Uh, another point that I should mention is that, um, and uh, I believe this shows up later, but when you save a MATLAB file or a MATLAB script and you name that file, the naming uh, uh, criteria for the file actually go along with the naming criteria for the variables. So make sure there's no spaces or, or, or odd symbols in your file name or the, the program won't run. So that's just a, a point to mention right off the bat. Now MATLAB will, when it executes a script, it'll start at line one and it'll work its way down. So if you look over here on the left, on the left we have a line of code that says y equals x plus two and then the line below says x equals three. So you and I could look at that and recognize that y will be five because if x equals three, then three plus two is five. The problem is MATLAB won't understand that. MATLAB will read line one and it will say y equals x plus two, well, what's x? And if you haven't previously defined x in the command window, it won't be able to run that program. So on the right, 
you can see the first thing that was done was the variable was defined and then the computation uh, is performed on line two. And that's the correct way to, to go about writing a program. So pretty basic stuff, but just wanted to, uh, to get that uh, out of the way. Now, um, one of the, the most important um, uh, facets of a well-structured and a well-written program uh, is commentary. So one of the most important elements of a MATLAB script is actually the percent symbol. Now once you type the percent symbol, anything that is left on that line of code will be treated as a comment. Okay, And the, the, the idea behind comments is that comments are not executed as code. Um, and, and comments are, are they are the hallmark of well-crafted programs because having good commentary helps explain how a program works, not just to others, but to you. If you write a program uh, to do a very complex calc and then you have to open it and edit it, you know, a couple years down the road, well, you want to leave yourself uh, the trail of breadcrumbs, as it were, to make sure that you understand how you wrote that program. And, and commentary is definitely the way to go with that. So to give you kind of an idea of what I mean by commentary, this would be a very good example of, of a well-crafted line of code. So let's say you're doing a physics uh, program, and on line 14 you need to define the acceleration due to gravity. Well, you could go in, uh, here I'll open up a MATLAB script to kind of explain. So here's my MATLAB script, so I could, right here I could type G equals 9.81, and then use my semicolon to suppress that. And that's fine, the, the code will run no problem at all. However, if I type the percent sign and start uh, typing, you know, G equals uh, the acceleration due to gravity, and then indicate that that's in meters per second squared, then that, that's going to be much clearer to a user down the road. Um, they're going to understand what that variable is, what the associated units are, uh, uh, and etc. So having um, a commentary next to variables and, and, and all throughout your program is definitely um, a, uh, a, a good thing to include in your program. It's going to be required also on a lot of the assignments that we do uh, in this class. Um, uh, again, uh, once uh, MATLAB sees the percent sign, um, it will not execute. So you can type whatever you want after the percent sign. There's uh, no limits on symbols. You can put uh, uh, any symbol that you want or underscores, dots, anything you want. Um, so that's, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, to, to give you kind of an idea, this is a, a screen capture that I took of a, a piece of code that I wrote uh, for my uh, PhD research. And you can see it, it, there's actually more commentary than there is code because I wanted this code to be very... Um, well understood to users who, who would employ it. You can see each variable is defined along with the associated units, what they are, what they're used for, oh, sorry, uh, and etc. Again, the idea is if you revisit this down the line, you'll understand what all of these uh, uh, variables represent. Okay, so uh, if we were writing a script, let's say, to compute velocity, the upper window would be an example of poor programming. The, uh, the, the uh, bottom one would be an example of clear programming. One other point that, that uh, is worth mentioning, uh, it's very typical on your first line of your program to include commentary that describes the general purpose of the program. So uh, you can see here, uh, up above I have x equals 50, t equals 5, and v equals x over t. But on the bottom, the first line is not defining variables, it says script for computing velocity. So it tells the user what the script uh, is being used for. Um, so uh, a couple, uh, also a couple keyboard shortcuts. So let's say, let me um, let me scrunch this up a little bit. Sort of move this up here. So um, let's let's move this down a little bit. Now let's go to line one. Uh, a couple things on keyboard shortcuts. So if I just type script for computing velocity. You can, you can tell MATLAB is having a, a, a really odd time uh, interpreting this because it's treating this script function as if it's a command. It's a little odd. Now, um, if you don't feel like typing the percent symbol right before here or moving your cursor or what have you, 
If you have your cursor on the line and you hit Control R, it will automatically turn that line into a commentary. I can sit here and hit Control R over and over and over again, and it will just keep trying to treat that line as if it's commentary and keep uh, uh, adding that percent symbol. If you want to go backwards, just hit Control T, and ultimately it'll bring that back. And the reason why I mentioned the Control R and the Control T shortcuts is uh, commentary also actually has a very um, useful role in programming. It can be used to uh, debug a script. So if you've got a bunch of uh, uh, code, like a really, really large program, and there's something wrong, something's not running the way that, that it should, you can literally go down, turn everything into a comment, and then one by one start executing the code by removing, by hitting Control T and removing, you know, uncommenting that line, and just sort of line by line figuring out what's wrong. So it's actually a very good uh, tool for debugging uh, a script. Okay. Another thing that's worth mentioning are, is this message indicator. If you look here on my code, you'll notice I've got my code written, but right here on the right, there's this little green square, and this green square is actually indicating that there's no errors in my code uh, at all. Um, and it works a lot like a stoplight. So uh, if this square were yellow or orange, it would indicate that there's probably something you need to look at, and if there's something red, it's okay, we've got something wrong. So for instance, if I, if I go into this code, let's say I go on to, to line four, and I say x equals two, and I press enter, okay? Now you notice uh, the equal sign highlighted right here, but if you look over here on the right, it turned yellow. That's sort of basically saying there's a warning. There's something you probably ought to look at. Now if I hover over the tick mark, it says line four, terminate statement with semicolon to suppress the output. So it's saying that there, the code will still run, however, there's something you're probably going to want to look at, and it's on line four. So that's, that's a nice little tool that can be used to debug uh, whether or not something's going wrong. All right. To, to illustrate how we um, should uh, appropriately generate a, a, a script, let's write a quick program to compute the following. So. Um, for those of you who, who haven't taken engineering economics yet, this is a very uh, uh, famous equation from engineering economics, and this is used to compute the future value of an investment. So uh, to give you a, an idea, if I take, let's say, $100 and put it into a savings account that uh, 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 builds up interest at uh, an interest rate of 5%, and if that interest rate is or if that interest is accumulated each year, how much money would I have in the savings account after, say, 20 years? And uh, this is the formula that you would use to compute that. So what I want to do is uh, write a program that can be used uh, uh, that can be used to to calculate this. Now, for our program, uh, we're going to leave line one as a concise title to to uh, define what's going on. We'll leave line two blank. We'll use lines three through five to define the variables. Uh, make sure line six actually uses the equation and computes the future value. And also make sure we're using comments all over the place. One other point that I'll mention, we're going to use the following values, P equals 100. We're going to use N equals 10, 20. But we're not using I. The formula says I, but we're using INT when we write our code in MATLAB. The reason why is uh, we shouldn't really use I as a variable, because if you recall from the last lecture, I is already defined in MATLAB. That's the square root of negative one. It's the imaginary number. So by calling it INT, I'm, I'm naming it uh, something else. So uh, let's, let's go through and write this code. So I'm going to actually hit Control A and delete all this, because I want to write it in here. So let's see. Let's start off with, so I'm going to hit Control R. I want that first line to be a um, uh, commentary. And we'll say uh, future value of an investment. Okay, so line two we'll leave blank. We'll go down to line three. And let's use the following value. So if you look over here on the, this box with the red text, I have P equals 100. Hit a semicolon. I have what? INT equals 0 0.05. And we have n equals 20. Now if you notice uh, for a second my equal sign 
looked um, yellow. That's okay um, because uh, MATLAB is periodically checking your script to make sure there's nothing wrong. So if you're slow on typing, it might look like there's an error even though you put that semicolon there. Just give it a, a minute or so and it'll, uh, it, it'll uh, uh, catch up. Now, as we mentioned earlier, um, this is not enough for, for our code. We need to define each of these variables. So what I'll do is I'm going to um, insert some commentary out here to the right. I might space it out a little bit, so I'm just hitting the space bar to sort of move it out here. And I'll say P equals principal investment. And I'll say that's in dollars. So I put in $100 in my account. So we'll say, whoop, we'll say INT equals interest rate. And we'll say N, we'll call this the number of periods. So you're probably, uh, an easy way of thinking about this is, let's say maybe 20 years, right? So 20 different periods, so number of periods. <coughs> okay, so there's lines three through five. So on line six, we ought to do the calculation. So F equals P times, got to put your multiplication symbol in there, one plus I raised to the N. However, we can't use I, it's got to be INT. Okay. Now, notice the code is giving us a um, uh, uh, it's giving us a, 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 a warning sign, but that's because we didn't use a semicolon. I actually don't want to use a semicolon for this. Um, let me space this out a little bit though, and we'll say f future value of the investment, and again in dollars. Okay, um, before we, we run the program, something you might have noticed as I was clicking around here, if you put your cursor next to a given variable, let's say n, it will actually highlight all the times that variable shows up in your script. Again, another very valuable tool for, uh, for analyzing uh, the, the bugs uh, in your code. Okay, now um, let's see. Uh, before we run this, let's go ahead and save this file. So let's go to File, we'll say Save As. Um, I'm going to put this in my V drive, and I'm going to put it in that MATLAB folder that I created earlier. So it's got its own fo uh, folder. And for the name of the file, I'm just going to call it Future, future.n. Okay, so let's save that. All right. Now, if you notice, um, again, uh, this is another point. Make sure when you name your file, you're naming your file according to the rules for variable names. So if, if I had named it something like future space investment or future space value, that would have been wrong. It wouldn't have run. Now, to run the file, to run the script, it's it's pretty straightforward. Let me bring up my, my uh, 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 main interface. So I'm going to put this right here. Let me move that down and put my editor right here. So here's, oh good, bring it back up. So here's the code, here's MATLAB. Let's go ahead and run the file. Now when you run it, a little window pops up. Now it says uh, vfuture.m is uh, uh, not the current folder. Now the reason why it's saying that is if you look right here on your, your main body down here, you look at this uh, folder string, see where it says C, users, Michelson, document, MATLAB. It's trying to find the program in that folder, and it can't find it because I put it on my V drive. So if you hit change folder, you'll notice that that now says V MATLAB. Okay? And looking at my command window, look what it did. It spit out future on the prompt because that's actually the program that I ran is future. And then the only thing it displayed in the command window was F. And the reason why is because I did not put a semicolon uh, on F. So, all right, so this is just saying, you know, if that pop-up comes up, no big deal, just change the folder. Now, <coughs> so a, a couple other things worth, uh, worth mentioning. You should see in your workspace 
all four variables are listed, your future value, as well as the three that we created, P, N, and then your interest rate, I, N, T. Okay, so that'll be just sort of the gut check to see whether or not what you've done uh, is right. Okay, so if that's good, then let's make our program a little more user friendly and let's, we're gonna make the program uh, interactive. And we're gonna do that through the use of two very, very powerful commands. One is display and one is uh, input. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's go with display and let's, um, let's play around with that for a little bit. So I wanna go into line two and enter the following code or, or something like it. I think this will be the easiest way to explain how the display command works. So I'm up here on my main window. Oh, hovered that over a little too far. So let's go on my main window and I'm gonna go into line two and I'm gonna type in display Okay, um, right now, if you hover, it, you can see here on the right, it's got that, um, that red warning sign because it sees a function that isn't finished. So don't worry, we'll, we'll definitely finish this here in a second. Um, to begin my, my, uh, my text, I actually use an apostrophe sign. Um, so we'll say something like, this program will compute the future value of an investment use my other um, uh, apostrophe to close that up. You'll see your, te your text turns purple, and then close that up. Um, you can put a semicolon after this. It doesn't really matter as much for, for display commands because the actual purpose of a display command is to put text on the, uh, on the command window. So whether you use a semicolon or not on this really won't matter, okay? Now what I want to do is, is now that I've changed my program, I want to run it again. Um, so if I hit run, you'll see what happens. So if you look here on the bottom, the program did, did something a little bit different. It says this program will compute the future value of an investment and it listed the, uh, the, the value again because I did not uh, put a semicolon. So I can use the display command to actually um, uh, display text uh, to the user uh, so that they don't have to go into the code to see what's going on. Um, speaking of, I'm going to make the program a little more user friendly through the use of the input command. Now this is a, a really uh, nifty one. What the input command will do is allow the user of the program to put in different input values without actually having to change the script. So let me give you an, uh, an example. So let's go into our program, and you'll notice in my program, I've sort of hard-coded, if you will, P equals 100. And the only way to change that value would be to literally open up the script and go in and make this another value, like 150. Um, instead, um, uh, instead of defining P with a given value, I'm gonna use the input command. So we'll go input, do that. I'll use two apostrophes to begin typing. So I've just got input and I use two apostrophes. Instead of a value, let's say something like enter your principal investment in dollars. Something like that. Okay. So um, instead of putting in a value of 100, we put enter your principal investment in dollars. Okay, so let me go to the, uh, the program and now let's run it. One point I do wanna mention, now that our folder right here on uh, MATLAB matches um, where the, the file actually is, instead of actually hitting this run button, I could go down here and just type future. And the reason why future works is because that's the name of the program. All right, so if I hit enter and run that, you'll see a couple things happen. So this program will compute the future value of an investment. And then it says, enter your principal investment in dollars. So I can actually, as the user, go in and say, well, my principal investment is $100. And then uh, it will display, uh, display accordingly. So, you can use this to actually um, uh, make similar changes for all of the others. It makes the program much more, uh, much more versatile. So let me go into the code 
And let's do the same thing for all of the others. Instead of interest rate uh, of being just 0 0.05, let's go input, enter your interest rate. There we go. And then here we'll say uh, input, enter the number of periods. Okay. All right, so um, if you want just to make everything a little more streamlined, you can use your space bar and space everything out a little better. I, I sort of like to do that when I write programs. So let's see if we do that. And do that so everything's kind of lined up and then we'll um, put semicolons in here and you can actually space out your strings if you want I can actually space this all the way out like that space this all the way out like that now um, and maybe I'll do that so now everything's kind of kind of lined up so maybe now when I run the program I'm just gonna hit the run button uh, up here now look at your look at your uh, uh, command window. So we'll enter your principal investment in dollars. So 100, then 0 0.05 for the interest rate, and then 20, and bam. So the the added perk of this is that yeah, um, to run the program one time takes a little bit more work. But if you plan on running the program multiple times, all you have to do is change some initial values, and it all uh, uh, washes out in the end and comes out uh, very clean and very nice. Um, let's see, what are some other things that we can do to, uh, to clean up uh, this code? All right. <coughs> well, what I can do um, is, in, if you notice, I've got the code set up to, um, I've got the code set up to display input, but for the output it just says F equals uh, uh, 265.3298. So maybe what I ought to do is go in and change this up a little bit. Maybe I'll move this down. And I'll add some text to display once this is all done. So display. Um, let's have this. Let's say let's have it display. And actually, I'm going to space that out a little bit. Let's display your resulting. Let's say put that over here. Resulting future investment value is, and we'll do that, and we'll say display F. So what this will do is um, it will actually display the value um, once we have um, once we have input everything. Now I'm going to run the program and there's going to be a problem with it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so 100, 0 0.05, 20 and run. Okay. Now, actually, actually, you know what? Let me let me let me um, emphasize my value or my, my error here. I'm going to go into my workspace and I'm going to delete everything. Now let's run the program. So let's run. So we have 100. Oh, let me go into my command window. 100. 0 0.05. 20. And here's the error. Okay, so if you notice, it says your resulting future investment value is, and then it says undefined variable f. If you notice right here, okay, so right here on the code, I'm displaying f before the program knows what f is. So what I need to do is this. I need to take this text, and I need to move it down. So I need to calculate that value first then I need to uh, to run the program. So let me make sure that looks right. Okay. So now what I've done is I'm calculating F first, then I'm displaying it. And since I'm displaying F and I'm telling the code to display F, maybe I'll go ahead and stick that semicolon right there. Since I like everything to line up, I'll just sort of space that out right there. Okay. Now let's run the program. So run the program, we'll do 100, 0 0.05, 20, bam, your resulting future investment value is. So it's not too bad, you know, and it, it, it gives you a much more 
usable and, uh, and, and uh, cleanly run uh, program. And we can do a few more things to actually clean this up uh, a little bit. Uh, let's see. So, um, uh, let's see. Right now, we have a program that will do a basic computation and it will uh, interface with the user um, um, quite easily. Okay. Now, um, one of the um, things we would like to do is, uh, however, is expand the capabilities of our program. In other words, um, right now, MATLAB is just doing some, some fairly uh, basic computations. And I want MATLAB to be a little smarter. I want it to be able to actually make some, some fairly basic uh, 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 decisions. So in order to do that, we need to cover what's called relational operator syntax. Now, a relational operator is just a fancy term for some pretty basic stuff that I'm sure you've seen before in your other math classes, things like less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal, um, how MATLAB would do not equals to. It actually uses a little tilde. It's a little squiggle mark, essentially. And you can find that right next to the number one. If you hit shift the next to the number one, that will give you that little squiggle mark. Um, but this would be how we would, uh, uh, this is some of the, the fundamental stuff that we would uh, need in order to get MATLAB to, to make a decision. So, so what I'm getting at is let's say for this particular, um, uh, uh, let's say for this particular program that you have an investment goal of let's say $300. Well, you've seen based on all the math that we've done that uh, putting in $100 at 5% interest for 20 years is only going to give you about $265. So if your investment goal is $300, well then this isn't enough. Okay? And you can have MATLAB actually do uh, these calculations and these decisions uh, and make these decisions for you. And the basis of that is an if statement. Okay? So based on the result of a, uh, a given uh, conditional expression, we can help, uh, we can tell MATLAB to generate different outputs. So here's a basic example of how a MATLAB, or an if statement, or if then statement, they're sometimes called the same thing, uh, of how an if statement would work. So let's say I have a grade on a given exam, and it was a 42. Well, typically, uh, anything that's greater than or equal to a 60 is a passing grade, and anything less than that uh, is a failing grade. So what I might have is an if statement that says, if your grade is greater than or equal to, to a 60, then tell the user that you passed. Otherwise, tell the user that you failed. So the syntax for an if statement uh, is pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. Um, now there's really um, uh, three different types of uh, if statements that you can use uh, in MATLAB. One of them is pretty basic. That one's, that's this one right here. If some conditional statement is true, execute a number of commands. Uh, the one that's uh, on, on this previous slide is actually, uh, it falls into this group. If some statement is true, execute a group of commands. Otherwise, execute a different group of commands. Uh, and that's what was on the, the previous slide. The other more intricate ones is having a series of commands for a number of, dish, uh, of, of given statements. And this one over here on the right may seem pretty complicated. It's actually, it's actually really not. This would be a really good example of, uh, of where multiple or stacked uh, if statements, if you would, would come into handy. So let's say you got an 82 on that exam. Well, that would probably be a B in most classes. So if, uh, this is just an example of a stacked if statement. So if your grade uh, is greater than or equal to a 90, display that you received an A. Otherwise, uh, if it's greater than or equal to 80, display that you received uh, a B, and so on. So the way that the program would work is line one would define the value of grade. And then at line two, the program will see that word if, and it'll say, okay, this is, an, this is a conditional statement. This is a programming uh, statement, so we need to do some figuring here. So the first thing it'll do is it'll look at line two, and it'll say, if grade is greater than or equal to 90. And it'll say, well, that's not true. So it'll skip everything below that and go to the next line that has uh, conditional programming. In other words, it'll skip all that and go to line four. And it'll say, okay, else if, is the grade greater than or equal to 80? Okay, now that statement is true. So it'll then execute everything below that and then skip all the way to line 12. So it's, it's a, a really uh, easy way to, um, to uh, help your program make some statements. And it's really not that hard to program. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, um, 
one other uh, uh, um, additional programming, um, uh, I guess, uh, element that needs to be discussed is uh, uh, the use of additional logic statements like let's say and and or. These are really powerful uh, uh, terms in the programming lang or in the programming world. So to give you kind of an idea, let's just go back to that, that test and let's say you got an 82 on that test. Well, the reason why that 82 is a B is because that grade is greater than or equal to, to um, uh, uh, 80, but it's also less than 90, okay? Uh, in other words, from a mathematics standpoint, an 82 is greater than or equal to 80, and that's a B. But a 97 is also greater than or equal to 80. That doesn't make it a B uh, also. It's B, uh, 97 would be an A. So for a grade to be a B, it has to be greater than or equal to 80, and it has to be less than 90. So here's a, uh, uh, an if-then statement that's using and. So here's grade equals 82. If the following is true, that the grade is greater than or equal to 80, and the grade is less than 90, that will uh, uh, display that you received a, a, a B. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to edit this program, and I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to use the uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, some if statement programming to expand my program a little bit. So I'm going to go into the editor. Um, let's let, let's play around with this a little bit. Let's go to line nine. Let's leave not line nine blank, and let's add a new variable here. Let's call this goal. So we'll say goal equals input. Um, Let's see. Let's say enter your investment goal. All right, so and we'll, I'm going to line that up with all the others. Okay. Put semicolon there. We'll say goal equals investment goal. In dollars. I'm just lining that up with the space bar. Okay, so um, to give it, so to go back to what I was mentioning earlier, based on the inputs that we've been using, $100 at 5% interest rate for 20 years, that's about $265. Now, if my investment goal is 300, I would not have made made that goal. I mean, let's say. I mean, 20 years is a long time to save up for something that's only 300 bucks. But let's say you were trying to save up for something that's that's $300. Well, you want the program to determine whether or not you've saved up enough money. So let's um, let's build an if statement. Okay. So if. All right. Now you notice as soon as you start typing if, MATLAB recognizes that this is an if statement and it goes to work. So I want um, MATLAB to determine whether or not I have met my investment goal. So essentially what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say if F is greater than or equal to my goal, then I have met my investment uh, goal. So we'll say enter, we'll say display some text. Now what do I want it to display? Oops. What do I want it to display? Well, if I have met my goal, maybe something like hooray. You have met your investment goal. Now that's if that statement is true. Think, if my future value is greater than or equal to my goal, good, you, you've met your goal. Otherwise, I want it to display something else. Else display. You have not yet met your goal. And then press enter and end. One of the nice things about MATLAB is you'll notice MATLAB was recognizing that this was a, an if statement and it started indenting our code. Notice how it spaced everything out just like we like, you know, it was sort of it was indenting that a little bit. I didn't have to go through and actually space it out. Um, it did it for me. Now, now, let's be clear, you can, you can space this out however you want. Um, uh, if you decide, well, you, you were playing around with this and you want to get it back to that nice, clean, uh, um, uh, lined up format, just highlight everything and hit Control 
I, and it sort of brings everything into that, that smart indent um, uh, format. <coughs> so uh, let, let's, uh, let's test this, this program out. Let's see what happens. So here's this, here's that. <coughs> let's run this. So run. So principal investment in dollars, so this is 100. Interest rate, 0 0.05. Enter the number of periods, 20. So uh, my resulting future investment value is $265. So if I want 300 bucks, I haven't met my goal. And it says right here, you have not yet met your goal. Let's try it again. Let, let's run it again. Let's let's put in some different input. Let's, let's uh, keep with the 100 the 0 0.05 and the 20, but let's put an investment goal that we know we will meet. So for instance, if my resulting future value is 265, let's put an investment value of 200. So we know we have met that goal, and hooray, you have met your investment goal. So, um, so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how uh, if statements can work uh, in your program. Now, um, a couple things uh, just to clear up some stuff. So, for instance, um, in our code, uh, you'll notice here's the the command window, and it's getting sort of bogged down with a lot of different uh, a lot of different output. So, I might go in here and I might insert. I might say, let's put in a CLC just to clear the command window each time I run the program. So, when I run the program. Now you can see everything sort of cleared out and I'm back at square one. Makes using the program, I think, a little easier. So 100, 20, 200. So makes that a little, uh, little easier to use. Um, if you want, you might go into the very beginning of the, uh, the script and say, since this is a money uh, script and we're talking about investment values and whatnot, maybe at the very beginning use something like format bank. So it formats all the numbers to be currency uh, values since we're talking about money here. So that's just an idea. Um, <coughs> another uh, quite powerful command is what's called fprintf and basically that uh, prints to a given file and it formats the way that that, uh, that, that uh, value is printed. You can also use fprintf to format the way that data is uh, displayed on the screen. So the way that, that uh, fprintf works is you can print certain text as well as variables associated with that. And that, that's really where the fprintf command really comes into um, uh, uh, its power. Uh, fprintf is really good if you're tr really wanting a lot of control over your output. And up until now, we've really just been displaying sentences and numbers, pretty basic stuff. But fprintf is where we can have a little bit more um, power with this. You know, we're, we're, later on, we're going to talk a little bit about exactly how MATLAB can output data. We can have MATLAB output to you know, a text file or a data file. We can even have MATLAB export to an Excel file if we want. So there are interoperability uh, 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 potentials uh, as well. So to demonstrate this, um, let's make the following replacement uh, on our script. So if you notice on, let's see, here's my script. Uh, we'll go right here. So here's my script, and you notice, uh, here, maybe I'll, I'll move this up so you can see this. So I'm right here. If you look at line 8 and line 9, um, what I've done uh, uh, previously, as I said, your resulting future investment value is whatever this value is, and then display F. I had two lines of code. I'm going to replace this with the following. I'm going to do fprintf, um, and we'll say uh, your resulting future value is, and this code's going to seem a little strange. Don't worry, we'll explain this here in a minute. 9.2f, and then backslash n. So, um, and then comma f. Okay, I know this seems uh, a little a little long and a little uh, verbose. It's actually not so bad. So uh, we'll take this one step at a time. So first off, where it says F print F, it says your resulting future value is whatever this is. So um, so first off, this is still printing text, but I, I want to um, uh, I want to be clear as to, to what it's doing. So let me go on to the next slide 
and I want to I want to keep this slide here so that he can see what's going on. Um, I like F print F actually a little more than display because it's much more versatile. So um, if you'll notice, I want to I want you to take I want to take each one uh, and explain what uh, what it's doing. So first off, this slash n. So this slash n inserts a new line. If you're looking for the backslash, it's right above the enter key. Um, but this, uh, what this will do is it will display some text, and then it will automatically sort of press the enter key and move on to a, to a new line. If you don't include uh, this, slash, this slash n, when you run the program, you'd sort of get like a, a run-on sentence. And, it, and, and uh, the easiest way to show that is let's just run the program without the slash n. Here's this. Let's just run the program and see what happens. So 100, 0 0.05, 20. And then if you press enter, see, look what happens. It says your resulting investment value is, and it displayed the value, and then like a run-on sentence, it just, you know, sort of kept on. So what I'm going to do is if you press this, uh, well, here, let me enter in an investment goal, so 200. Um, uh, let's go in and slash in. Now let's do it again. Now I inserted my slash in. Now let's run it. So 100, 0 0.05, 20. There. Now you can see that the future value is, and we can see that it's, um, we can see that it has uh, uh, in inserted the text and then pressed enter and moved down. So 200. So that slash n will just uh, give us a, a, a new line, uh, as it were. Okay, so that's what the slash n is doing. Now that percent 9.2f, what that percent 9.2f is doing is um, it is telling fprintf to call a given value. In this case, it's calling the f value because that's what we uh, uh, indicated. So it says, your resulting future value is, and it says percent 9.2f, that percent 9.2f is calling whatever is right here, in this case, f. So the percent sign told MATLAB to call the variable, in this case, f. Um, the little, little f on the end uh, indicated that we would be using a fixed point decimal, and then and essentially we're doing a fixed point value to two decimal places. So if you think, that kind of makes sense with, with what we're talking about since we're talking about money. Money is typically rounded to two decimal places as we're talking about to the nearest, uh, nearest penny. The nine, that one's a little, uh, takes a little more uh, uh, time to discuss, but essentially the nine just told MATLAB to fit the output within nine characters. So I've got here a little image on the slide. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the output is 265.33. So if you notice, there should be three spaces. And if you look at the, the command window, um, that's kind of what happened. I mean, if you look, we're looking at this line right here, your resulting future value is, and there's sort of one, two, three, and then it, it begins typing. So that, that's really all that is. If you're ever in doubt, just use zero, so percent 0 0.2f. But this is where you can start to play around with uh, formats. Um, there is much more info available in the documentation on how to use this. This is this per, uh, f print f is a little more on the advanced side, but if you're playing around with a lot of uh, outputs and trying to create a very user-friendly program, it really is worth the time to uh, to try and master it. And there's a lot of uh, uh, again, there's a lot of uh, valuable info in the documentation. If you go to the documentation and just type f print f. Know, up here on the top right, you can click this and this will pop up. Again, much more info here about uh, different ways of formatting, different line spacing, different character assignments. Instead of doing a percent F, maybe you do a percent G uh, or percent U for an integer uh, and what have you. All these different uh, uh, identifiers. And this has, again, got a lot of, uh, lot of power to it. So uh, before I, I end the video, I uh, hope I'm not going over too long. Uh, we're actually, we're doing pretty good on time. Um, uh, I do want to at least pull up the homework just to sort of um, uh, uh, illustrate some things. One thing you'll, you'll point out, if you notice in my MATLAB directory, I now have an ASV file. That stands for autosave. So it's actually automatically saving 
uh, my code to make sure I don't lose anything. Um, if I go to the homework, okay, here is the homework assignment. Uh, it might seem long, but it, it's actually not. It's actually pretty straightforward. So on the homework assignment, um, uh, we're having you compute uh, the bearing capacity of a foundation. Now the foundation, uh, this is something that you'll learn if you're a civil engineering student and you take geotechnical engineering. This is the fundamental bearing capacity equation for a shallow foundation. You know, when you build a building, uh, you've got to have, you know, I'm sure people around West Virginia has probably heard of them as, as your footers or your footings. Uh, this is essentially how you would appropriately size a, a footing or a shallow foundation. Um, so uh, for this program, uh, while it seems like a lot, this is really meant to be more of a cookbook type approach to assure that your, uh, found, or your program is being written appropriately. So for the script uh, for problem two, uh, use commentary on line one to define a title for the script. And you can call it something like shallow foundation calculation uh, or something like that. Enter a CLC on line two to clear the command window after each use. So if you notice, we kind of did that here on this program. We put a CLC in to sort of uh, clear the uh, uh, command window before each use. Um, now, uh, I've got here two sets of variables. I've got these variables right here, and then I've got uh, these. Now, this first set, the idea behind uh, this set of variables is, let's say that um, we went and did soil testing on a given site and, come up and came up with um, some parameters related to, it, to the soil, like its unit weight or its uh, cohesion or the, uh, co the factors for a bearing capacity. Um, these values I don't want to have to enter in every time I run the program. So these values I want uh, to sort of be hard-coded, if you will. Remember before, if we go into our code, um, before we were using these input commands, we had something like you know, P equals 100, you know, something like that. Um, these, uh, uh, that's essentially how I want uh, these five variables created. It's just you know, C equals 100, and semicolon. Um, as for the variable names, for instance, uh, gamma is, uh, is the unit weight value. But since it looks a lot like a Y, we'll just say just use Y as the variable name and then n sub c, n sub q, n sub y, just use a little underscore. Okay, so those five hard code in, but these four use the input uh, command to actually force the user to input foundation widths, foundation depths, factors of safety, and your applied column load. So the idea is that, um, you know, if you are the engineer of, of record and you're trying to design this foundation, you're going to toy around with different foundation sizes based on a given site. So that's sort of the idea. Um, one other point, MATLAB does not account for units, so you would have to do all the unit conversions. But if you'll notice, all the units are all consistent, so you, all, you don't need to worry about that for this assignment. Everything's in pounds and feet and pounds per square foot, uh, et cetera. Okay, once you've got all these, have the code compute Q actual and Q allowable. Now Q actual is the actual applied pressure. It's just the load divided by the area of the foundation. Pretty simple. The allowable bearing capacity is computed using this uh, equation right here. So I want to know uh, at the end if Q actual is less than or equal to Q allowable. If that's true, then what that means is that the actual pressure being put on the foundation is less than or equal uh, to what's allowed. So if the actual load is less than what's allowed, then you're good. So the foundation's adequately designed. If it's false, then the foundation's too small and it needs to be redesigned. So find a write an if statement at the very end to actually make this determination. If it's true, then have the program display text stating that the foundation is adequately, de adequately designed. If it's false, then have the program display text that it's too small. Um, now test the program with the following values right here. So a B of 4, a DF of 3, a factor of safety of 3, and, and a Q of 84,000. And what I want you to do is, based on these values, I want you to tell me whether or not the foundation is adequately designed. What did the program spit out to you? Whatever it spits out to you, 
put that in the Word document at the very end of, the, of what you submitted for the previous problem and save that as homework six. Also, make sure that you save the, you save the script, the actual program that you write. Call it shallow or shallow.m and put that in your, uh, your network folder. Uh, all right, that's all we've got for this lecture. If you've got any questions, of course, I can uh, be reached by email. Uh, everybody have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week.